Hi everyone, welcome to Tween Book Talks. Um, my name is Whitney and I'm with the Meridian Library District and I'm excited for this week to come up with some new books for you. Um, two of them are graphic novels and one of them is a nonfiction this time. Um, I'm super excited about all of them to share with you. So let's jump right in. Um, the first book is called Jelly Bee. I kind of look to see how others pronounce this title because there was some different ways people have pronounced it. Um, so I'm just going to say Jellybee, or it's probably Jellyby, something probably super incorrect is how I'm saying it, but that's okay. That's what we're going to do. And this is by Keen Su. It is a graphic novel. Um, I really like this one because the graphic novel, like it's all like these like cool undertones of purple. I don't know if you can see it great in the video, um, but like purple and black and like black and white kind of situation. So Jollibee actually follows um, Patricia Bennett, who is a young girl who just moved to Toronto, Canada. Um, she's the new kid. She thinks all of her classmates are weird and she thinks the whole town is weird actually. So she actually spends a lot of time alone because she doesn't have any friends yet. Um, and she thinks of herself as a pretty ordinary girl, but she's definitely bored a lot because she doesn't have friends. So, um, one night though, she was awoken in the middle of the night by this weird feeling like someone was watching her, she was hearing noises, and she wasn't sure what was going on. So she woke up and she went out to look out her window, and she swore she saw, like, a purple figure, like, pass by her window and go into the forest behind her, her house. And she did. Um, she went out and followed it, and it was Jellybee. Um, Jellybee is like this big old purple monster thing, but he has like little wings in the back, so I think he's a dragon. I mean, they don't say he's a dragon, they just call him a monster, but I like to think he's a dragon. So she discovers Jellybee. Instead of being scared and frightened of him, because I mean, look how cute he is, who would be frightened of him, she actually brings him back to his house and feeds him a tuna fish sandwich, because that's all I had was tuna fish, which she got in trouble from her mom later anyway, because she wasn't supposed to get into the tuna fish. Um, so Patricia knows that she can't really tell anyone about Jellybee because she doesn't think, one, anyone's going to believe her, or two, she doesn't want him to get locked up or hurt or anything like that. So she, um, struggles to try to find a way to communicate with him to figure out where he came from. Um, but Jellybee, like, takes an instant liking to Patricia and definitely follows her around and follows her to school and causes a bunch of different problems and trouble for her along the way there. And so this kind of just follows their story about um, how Patricia is trying to help him find his way back home or where he came from. And it is a series. So this is the first book in the series. Um, there was like a cliffhanger at the end and I was like, no, I need to know what happens to him. So I got the other books on hold because I'm excited to read the rest of it. But it's a super cute, funny, easy to read graphic novel. I highly recommend it. Jelly Bee by Keen Sue. So check it out. And now we're going to move on to our next one. Our next one is called Invisible Emmy. It's, um, covers like a middle school life story, you know, um, it follows Emmy, who's a super shy, shy and quiet girl. Um, she usually keeps to herself. She has a couple best friends, but that's about it. Uh, and this story follows her and how her and the popular girl Katie's life, um, ends up intertwining. Um, so what happens is Emmy, has a huge crush on this boy named Tyler. Um, she thinks he's just the smartest, sweetest, like cutest boy she's ever seen. And she decides to write like a love note. She never planned on giving it to him. She just wanted to write it down to get her feelings out. Um, with no plans to give it to him, she actually loses it. And it is found by another boy who spreads it around the whole school that Emmy's in love with this Tyler boy. Um, but this circumstance and this embarrassment actually pulls her and Katie together. I won't say how and a lot of other details because I really want you guys to check it out because it's such a good book. Um, the graphics are really cool too. I love how it's pretty, like, realistic. I love the graphics. There's a lot of, like, side comments too in the book. Like, it'll be, like, the dialogue of what they're saying, but then there's, like, a side comment about, like, some of the situations, um, which I think is really funny and definitely worth looking into. So this is Invisible Emmy by Terry Leibenson, and you should check it out. It's really, really, really good. Okay, so we have one more, and this one I'll admit is my favorite. Um, I liked all of them, but this one is definitely my favorite, and this is actually a nonfiction book. So our next one is History Smashers, um, Women's Right to Vote by Kate Messinger and Dylan, and illustrated by Dylan McConus. Um, this book was so good. I read it in a day, like maybe over like a couple hours. It was so, so, so good. 
So basically, History Smashers is telling the true story about how women's right to vote came to be. Um, we all think that we know kind of how it came to be, and you might have heard the involvement of Susan B. Anthony in it. That's how a lot of us hear the story, that her and a bunch of other women, you know, they went up in arms and they got us the right to vote, um, which is partly true. Susan B. Anthony was there, but she's not the whole story. She's definitely not even the tip of the iceberg. Um, she was there, though, for sure. So this book actually covers, like, what really happened and some of the other women involved and how we sometimes paint a pretty picture about how history happened. But it's a lot more complicated and a lot more messy than that. Um, I'm actually going to read the first uh, paragraph. It's a couple paragraphs of this book because it really kind of grabs you in and catches your attention of how, like, the book's going to be setting. So I'm going to read part of that now. Okay, you've probably heard stories about American women who won the right to vote. Chances are you learned about Susan B. Anthony, who fought for the right along with some of her friends. It's true that for a long time in America, only men could vote. That went on for more than a hundred years, until women got so angry they did something about it. Maybe this is where you've imagined Susan B. Anthony and her pals coming into the story, a group of women in fancy hats, sipping tea, and writing letters and talking about equality. But that's just a tip of what really happened. The true story about women's right to vote is a lot longer and more complicated than that. And Susan B. Anthony was just a part of the bigger picture. A story of women who worked together, but also fought with each other. They argued over everything from who should get to vote and how they should go about making change. Sometimes those women had one another's back and sometimes they didn't. Some of the same white women who talked and wrote about justice and equality fought hard to keep women of color living separate and unequal lives. Sometimes the women who fought for voting rights were heroes, and sometimes not so much. Some of them worked hard to hide the contributions of other heroes because of the color of their skin. In the end, the story of women's fight for the right to vote is much messier, more than the history books would like, you, would like to share. Let's mash that old story. Here's the real deal. So that's like the first um, little tidbits of the book to get you ready. And yeah, it definitely, there's a lot of things that I learned that I was like, I thought I knew more about this than, you know, maybe the average person, the average student in school. And no, I did not. There was a lot of surprising things and twists. And and the one thing that a lot I think is like sugar-coated and um, kind of sprinkled over is um, that women of color, there was a lot of women in this you know, mission and all the stuff with Susan B. Anthony that didn't think they actually should have been able to vote because of the color of their skin. It didn't matter that they were women or not. They had a whole other thing that people were like, no, that's not the same, which sounds really hypocritical, doesn't it? It sounds completely stupid since we're fighting for rights for women to vote, but we're saying, oh, only certain women. So it definitely paints a little bit of a messier picture is the way it describes it. And I think that's a great way to say it. Um, but it's totally worth the read, and there's so much new information. And you meet these other characters that are real, like the real people that actually got us the right to vote and stuff that are amazing. And not to, like, push down what Susan B. Anthony did, because she still did a lot of work, even though she didn't have the best intentions for some of it. You know, she still did a lot of work. But you meet these new characters that are really inspiring and that I think more people can relate to than Susan B. Anthony and I like the tone of the book, if you heard me read it. It's more like people, someone's talking to you, like you're conversing with someone. It's not like someone talking at you or like a textbook just listing facts and facts and like you're supposed to understand how all of it is. It really is very easy to understand. It's easy to read and it's really good for middle grade. And I think me as an adult, I loved it too. And I loved the way it was easy to read. So can't recommend this one enough. Please get it, go put it on hold and read it. Obviously the other ones too, but if you're not, I won't have time for more than one, this is definitely the one to do. So that's all of my books. Um, thank you for coming to Tween Book Talk. I hope you guys found some that you're itching to check out. Um, you know, you can put them on hold online at mld.org. Um, or we have our new home delivery service. So if you can't come into the library, go ahead and go onto our website. And for a drop-down location, just click home delivery, and then the books can come right to you. You don't even have to wait very long. So thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.